The new esports game is here, Valorant. It's basically CSGO plus Overwatch. A lot of people seem to be really enjoying it. It's also under some controversy for its anti-cheat software, but that's not what we're gonna be talking about today. No, my friends, today we're gonna be talking about the cheapest Valorant PC that you can build. This was actually inspired after my pal Zach over at Zach's Tech Turf did a video where he benchmarked budget graphics cards to show just how well Valorant performs on each of them. And you, I mean, go watch his video if you have any one of those graphics cards. But that led me to believe that we could go even cheaper than he did and get some decent gaming performance out of this system. With ZTT's video showing us that Valorant runs on a basic potato, I wanted to cut things down. We have this PC, which we made in our $250 PC build guide, which you can check out right there. And it's comprised of an Athlon 3000G, but with no graphics card, as you can see on the inside there. However, that doesn't seem to be the problem with Valorant. This Athlon 3000G, which graphics card resides in the processor itself, actually performed pretty admirably for only a $250 system. We actually ended up averaging 88 FPS with the Athlon 3000G at 1080p lowest. So there's still even room to pick up some of the specs in order to get it above 60 FPS, but still at 1080p. This is actually a phenomenal game to run on even the lowest end hardware. So with that being said, I wanted to cut down the $250 PC and see how low could we get it to make it so that it is the cheapest Valorant PC that you could build on the market right now. So first up, the easiest thing that we cut from the $250 PC build is the SSD. In the build that we went with, I got a 500 gigabyte SSD, but you really only need 120 gig SSD for that to install Windows. And then Valorant's like a eight to nine gigabyte install. It's really not too intensive on your programs. The 120 is just to make sure that you have extra extra space for anything else you're doing, like installing Chrome, or if you wanna install another game. Fun fact, if you try to install Fortnite and Valorant on a PC, you better make sure you don't have anything else on there, because there's hardly gonna be any room, because Fortnite takes up over 80 gigs, apparently. I learned that recently. So the 120 gig SSD doesn't affect our performance in the slightest. In fact, the SSDs are gonna perform roughly the same. You're gonna load into the games roughly at the same time. So it's an easy cut right there to save a little bit of money. I went with this PNY 120 gig, it's $22.99. But then we we're able to drop some of the power supply money. So the power supply in this thing, I got after a mail-in rebate for $29.99. However, there are a couple of other options that are slightly cheaper than that even still. There's this Apivia 450 watt, which comes in at $22.99, the same price as the 120 gig SSD. However, I haven't heard the best reviews of Apivia. Although some people say it's great, they've lasted for a while. Other people are saying that it blows up, so your mileage may vary there. However, the EVGA 400N1 comes in at $25 after rebate if you wanna check that one out. Now, the next sacrifice that I made, which actually did impact our performance, which I'll get to in a little bit, was cutting down the RAM because AMD really likes dual channel. That was a sword that fell while filming. Hot dog. I'm gonna keep going. So AMD really likes to have dual channel RAM and dual channel essentially means that you have two sticks and that they're running simultaneously. Once you get down to one stick and you're on single channel, that actually hampers the performance of the Athlon 3000G. How much it hampers, I'll talk about that in a second. But going down to four gigabytes, which is a single stick, and lowering the RAM speed to 2,400 megahertz versus 2,666 megahertz actually ran remarkably okay. So you can check out this four gigabyte kit that we have for $18.99 versus the $37.99 that we paid for the eight gigabyte kit that's in this PC right now. And it actually works out pretty decently. So instead of 87.9 FPS with the eight gigabytes, we ended up averaging 52 FPS, which isn't quite 60. However, if you do wanna hit 60, you could likely drop your resolution to 720p, but 1080p low on single channel RAM in the latest eSport game to come out and getting 52 FPS average, that is more than playable. I don't care who you are, if you're building a crappy PC like this, you're gonna be able to make that sacrifice. I remember playing Team Fortress 2 back in the day and only getting 12 FPS. So 
getting 52 on a not even having a graphics card is, is quite phenomenal these days. Then the case. So with this $250 PC build, we went with a $24 case that we could find on Newegg. However, with everything that's going on with the worldwide pandemic, things are out of stock. And so this $24 case isn't in stock anymore. However, there is this $30 Hex HX200, which seems to be about the same quality. It's not great. It's enough to build in. It'll work. It's an Athlon 3000G. It doesn't really need to be kept all that cool. It'll be fine. You'll be okay. Then motherboard, A320, $55. That's it. If you want to go cheaper, there's like a $50 one on eBay. You could do that. I'd rather get in on Amazon for $55. Athlon 3000G, the centerpiece of this build, $50 in stock on Amazon right now, which previously our $250 PC build guide, it was not in stock. And I actually had to import this from the UK for like $80. However, now it's in stock on Amazon, so you can pick that up. So after all of that said and done, in order to get 52 FPS average in Fortnite, Valorant, Overwatch. So after all said and done, in order to get a 52 FPS average in the latest esports title of Valorant, you only need to spend $193.95, which is dirt cheap. $200 for a PC is hardly anything and you're gonna get very respectable performance. However, that does come with the cost of not having a very good upgrade path. The motherboard will support higher end Ryzen chips. If you do end up getting a dedicated graphics card at some point, you might be able to upgrade the Athlon 3000G to something like a Ryzen 5 1600 AF for $85. But the issue there is that overclocking is going to be eliminated on such a low-end board, but getting a low-end board is the easiest way to bring the cost down on this PC build. So lower-end board, lower-end chip reduces the upgrade path, but in case you need to play right now, you're under $200 for the complete system. And if you want to actually have a full kit with monitor, keyboard, mouse, and all of that included, I've got you covered here as well. I would highly recommend, if you don't have keyboard, mouse, or anything, this Red Dragon peripheral combo on Amazon going for $50 right now, you get everything. The headphones sound okay. The microphone on that's actually surprisingly clear. Keyboard, not terrible. Mouse, not awful. We checked that out in a video over a year ago, which you can check out right up there. It's the best-selling gaming bundle on Amazon. $50, it's hard to go wrong there. And then we also could recommend the monitor that you could pick up for that system, which is this Acer SB220Q. This is a $90 monitor, IPS, 1080p, 75 hertz, four millisecond response time. And you can basically have a future, more future-proof monitor for all of the games that you wanna play in the future. So after getting the system, the peripheral combo, and then this monitor, you're looking at a total cost of $333.93 to be ready to go to play Valorant. Not terrible. Just, just from a flat cost, from having nothing and spending less than $350, you can have a Valorant PC, which Valorant just seems to run on a potato that Riot did a good job of making it an accessible game, kind of like League of Legends is, that thing will run on anything. So Valorant seems to be in the same vein. If you are going to look for higher performance in other things, I would highly recommend getting eight gigabytes of RAM if you cannot afford the $38 kit versus the $19 kit, then hold off because you can put a second uh, RAM stick in there eventually later on down the line. So that would be the first thing that I would upgrade in this. If you're going with the cheapest, less than $200, First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is upgrade that RAM. Secondly, if you're gonna be getting a graphics card later on down the line, I would highly recommend swapping out the 3000G. There are new options that are out there, such as the Ryzen 3 3100 coming in for $100, but I would say that the Ryzen 5 1600 AF is still a better value. It's cheaper, number one, six cores instead of four cores. And then, I mean, the cheaper part is really what gets me. It's 15% cheaper than the 3100. So that would be my estimation of it. Let me know what you think of the cheapest Valorant PC you can build right now down below in the comments. Are there any other parts that you would recommend? Anything that you would swap out for? Obviously the 120 gigabyte SSD will only take you so far. You might have to upgrade your storage a little later on, but let me know what you think down below in the comments. That's gonna wrap it up. I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.